So we've just arrived here at this gigantic pyramid at a site called Izamal. Now this is the town between Merida and Chichen Itza. It's got foundations here going back to 700 BC, the earliest phase, but the main construction phase of this gigantic pyramid is from 200 BC onwards. It's got um, this pyramid here, which is pretty much the third or fourth largest in all of Mexico. The mass is actually the largest. It's got, so, you know, it's compared with really Cholula near uh, Puebla. And so it's a very, very impressive site. One of the other aspects here, which is one of the main reasons I wanted to come here is because it's got megalithic aspects. You can see the size of some of these stones behind me. And this is much like the site of Aki, which uh, we visited recently. And that's actually connected to this site by a gigantic, super long sackbait or sacred white road, uh, which connects with other sites in this area as well. There's more than one sackbait. But the fact is, this is free entry. You can just turn up here. It's in the town of Izamal and it's well worth a visit if you're anywhere in a Chichen Itza, Merida, or in the Yucatan Peninsula. So you can see behind me here, these are some of the megalithic blocks, which is kind of what makes this site unique, along with Aki in this area. Now, there's not many sites with stones as big as this. I mean, some of these are up to six feet long, some are even bigger, there's the multi-ton blocks. So whether that's within the structure itself, or whether it's built of earth and rubble, then has a casing of this, we don't know. But one of the things we'll see as we look around the pyramid is the fact that it has not only these blocks that make up the main exterior, but also has protruding thin slabs coming out, which are still megalithic. And we find this Aki as well, which is connected with this site. So it suggests there was an earlier megalithic culture here connecting these sites around this area that used this megalithic construction. So this is called the Pyramid of Kinich Kakmu. Now, that's interesting because there's a tradition here of um, fire macaw, and it's said that also that this, this was built around like a sacred cave or where they think they may have quarried some of the stone from. And it's actually entombed within the pyramid itself. So much like we find at Teotihuacan, pyramids in Egypt, there's underground aspects to this site, which could represent the underworld. It could represent something else. It could be what that was revered as a sacred site for many hundreds, if not thousands of years before the first stone was even put in place here. So even if we look around, you know, right down the side here, we, we, just, we just come in the main entrance, hit the first level, and already you can see the rubble, the kind of fairly neat and tidy rubble that makes up the interior. And over there, we're gonna go and have a look at that when we're finished in here. It closes in an hour or so. It's actually like some of the gigantic megalithic kind of slabs that protrude from the site. Now, what these were used for, we don't know. It could have been the construction. It could have had uh, part of the design spec. It could have had energetic functions. We don't know. We can see a couple of examples here which aren't so much jutting out. They're kind of just being broken off pretty much. But there's quite a few people here. It is free entry, which is amazing considering the magnitude and wonder of this particular site. So we're just heading up to the top now and we're reaching pretty much the second platform and then above there you can actually see as well as people posing. No one really knows about this site. This is really rarely visited. It's not on the tourist trail, it's probably because it's free. Worth Chichen Itza and Uxmal are 500 pesos to get in. So now we're up on the second platform and this is the main peak of the site, the final pyramid. The one has to climb to reach the top. So we're gonna take a look up here. This looks like it's slightly later construction, not so many massive megalithic blocks, but very interesting nonetheless. You can see there's actually one here, one pretty chunky megalith just at the base, which is interesting in its own right. And then we have to go up partly reconstructed steps 
and then not reconstruct his step. So we made it to the top of the pyramid here at Izamal. It's an impressive sight. I mean, this is on par with really Cholula in uh, Puebla, near, near Mexico City. And it's very impressive. So there are many sack bays leading out from here. There, there was a sun god, a Hawa, beautiful kind of stucco or carved limestone face, head carved here. That's now disappeared. It was illustrated though back in antiquarian times so we can show you that not too much else was found here there are a whole bunch of other sites all around the landscape here uh, that are part of this so Izamal, the town was actually built upon a giant mayan city so we're going to have a look at a few of those as we uh, move around this particular site and this town we think we're going to come and stay here as well because we like to explore because you also have uh, Chalton Ha, which I visited yesterday in the area, which is newly discovered and another pyramid site. And so there really is a lot more here than you can see just from up at the top of the pyramid. So looking roughly south from the top of the pyramid, where that huge convent is, where that you know, Catholic site is that was built in the 1700s, that is the grand plaza of the site. We're north of it here, on the Great Pyramid. And so throughout the town there and pretty much in that direction and also heading off in different directions via the sack base, we actually have more constructions which we're gonna try and look at. But we just wanted to come here and show you this site, especially the megalithic aspects because it's unique and the fact that it goes back to 700 BC, the earliest inhabitants, suggests there could be an earlier culture. It could be the Olmecs, it could be the foundation culture the tamon chans who we know were in morelis were they also up here did they spread out we know that there's a legend of cuckoo clan here or quetzalcoatl in this area with the um with the people of chichen itza and mayapan and others and maybe they spread up to the gulf coast they, they also came up this way towards the yucatan coast as well over there we have what would be the main plaza over here we have a structure called the itzamawi itzamau which rose at one time to 80 feet tall uh had three building phases we're going to go and see if there's anything down there of course um and it seems to date to a later period of 700 to 850 AD. It's the second largest structure at Izamal. So that's just over there in those trees. So we're gonna go and check that out. Um, it's just over to one side of what would have been the main plaza where you can see those yellow kind of hacienda buildings. So it's also said that this huge platform, we're on the very top pyramid of potentially, there's nine levels to this. So there's more than the three levels we've been on. There's actually multiple levels. There's two stairways coming up the east and west sides, so four there. One main one coming up the south side, the one we came up, and there's one down the north side, which you cannot, it's completely ruined now. Uh, and so there's a lot going on here throughout this whole town. It's really hard to see anything from up here because of the uh, tree line and the, the city that's been built over it. But we know Charlton Hart, which is just not far from here, it's a few minutes drive, newly discovered pyramid is part of this greater complex as is Aki which is again has this megalithic aspect and is connected by Sac Bay so we're going to have a little look around town see what else we can see down the sides of this pyramid and also some of the other constructions so we're just walking around the east side of the pyramid here you can see these amazing birds just flying around oh JJ and Adora spotted them as well But you can see now the nine levels. You can see the different levels as you go up much more clearly. And then it just turns into bush on the north side here as we head up to the top. But all down here, we have these different levels. It's like a massive Mayan city here and possibly pre-Mayan because there's a particular area here which just fascinates me between here and Ak Aki, which is just you know several miles uh, to the west joined by a sack it's just there's something going on here with these sites these particular sites so we're going to investigate these a little bit more thoroughly uh, and see what we find
And here we have JJ and Adora, the goddesses of Ismail. So this is the stairway just going up the south side of the pyramid. So one thing of interest about this pyramid here, the top part of this construction is the uh, curved edges. We obviously got some kind of altar or something down here. Now we know Kinnichihau was like a sun god and he was revered here. And this was probably built as the highest point kind of in his honor. And so there's a ceremonial aspect to this site that could go very far back, you know, much earlier than the Mayans and so forth. Seems like there was a megalithic culture just in this area. And we've got ruins down here all the way over to the edge. I'm gonna go and have a look at those in a moment. But it seems like the lower parts, the older parts are the more megalithic parts, which is a tradition we kind of find pretty much everywhere, really. You know, the older is the more megalithic. So we're just walking around the west side of the pyramid. And yeah, you can see the platform goes all the way over there. Yeah, it's covered in bush. So we can't really see too much. But they've done a good job. I mean, they've done a good job here. And I'm just interested in the interior because there's supposedly caves in here. And we saw at the top of the Aki Pyramid. But here it looks like some kind of looting has been done on the west, north side, northwest side. And you've got more constructions on the northern edge of the main part of the pyramid that, that goes down to the ground level. Although it probably goes deeper, probably goes much deeper than what you can actually see. Can't see so much megalithic aspect here. It's more around the front, around the south side. It could be down there, but we're going to drive around and have a look. So this is how big it is. It's taking this long just to walk along one side of the, <laughs> of the actual main construction. And we've got a few megalithic blocks lying around here, which are probably part of the original construction. But we'll go around the front of them so you can see it from ground level. That's the second, second uh, stairway just there, where that, uh, pretty much where that car is. So, this, so we, on the west and east side, you have two stairways coming up. And on the north and south side, one main stairway on each of the six in total. So the pyramid itself in total is 600 feet square. So 600 feet along one edge, more or less. The highest point is 110 feet high. So this is just about the same, or just a bit less than the pyramid of the magician at Uxmal, for instance, um, which is also in the Yucatan area. And it's the, the mass is what they think make it the largest of them all because there's so much stone and construction being built into this site that it puts it on par almost with Cholula, although Cholula is obviously a lot bigger. Um, but it's just a fascinating place. And I do recommend if you're in uh, the Yucatan, this is worth a visit. It's a beautiful town. It's lots of other things to look at here. Chaltanha, you've got this site and stuff all around town if you're into investigating the more uh, unusual, lesser known, and rarely visited parts of the Maya world here in the Yucatan. So we're just round the eastern side of the pyramid and here we have what looks like some kind of cave you can see some of the megalithic blocks that make up the side here. And so, yeah, this is pretty well preserved. You can just drive down the street and uh, yeah, you can see some of the platforms. But here, it's like a little cave entrance and it goes all the way in there. Someone's lit candles in there. So this is like a little sacred cave. Now, this could be the sacred cave that this pyramid was said in legend to have been built upon and maybe that's why it's revered so highly and people put these candles in there and uh, do ceremony and rituals this probably goes much much deeper we think it may be connected even to underground water possibly an underground cenote but the legend states that the reason they built here in the first place was because of a cave system, like a sacred cave, like access to the underworld. And even now we have 
someone's lit a beautiful ceremonial candles and fire in there. It's just inside the eastern edge of the main pyramid here. And there's the, uh, the uh, one of the two stairways that goes up the pyramid. Another one is further on behind those cars down the road. Absolutely amazing. It's amazing to see this here, just, just here inside, literally underneath a cave, underneath the pyramid of Izamal. So here we are around the north side of the main pyramid here and you can see the giant staircase here. There's one staircase up going up the north, there's two each on the west and east faces and one on the south. So this would be connected to a sack bay going in this direction to other sites. The one going west probably connects with Aki, or Ak which is just maybe 10-15 miles that way, maybe a bit more. But again you can see the megalithic blocks all the way sort of parts of it have got these megalithic constructions all the way around this whole pyramid. So here you can just see a close-up of some of the stones. You can see the big ones. I mean, these aren't as big as the ones around the south side, but they are pretty impressive. And lots of them have been taken. It's known that they were taken to build the local town. So not much is left, but enough is left to witness something very impressive here. And you can see some of the larger ones still exist on the lower levels here. Let's have a quick look around this side of the staircase. And that is actually up there, just behind that green area, that is actually the top of the main pyramid. So this whole, what we're standing on now is actually part of the platform. This isn't even, this staircase will go under the ground here and continue to a much deeper level beneath the road. And so a whole town has just been built around this. And then, this is very, very interesting. Then we have these natural rocky outcrops here within the trees, which may be connected with the caves of legend. And we saw the one around the eastern side. Some of the blocks have been used here, some of the larger ones. So this is like five feet long, just to surround this tree as seats, which is, <laughs> seems to be something we keep finding the more we look around these sites in ancient Mexico. And then up here, you can see some of the protruding blocks sticking out, like this one here, for instance. See that one in the middle there? So these are like slabs sort of sticking out the pyramid. They're all over the pyramid. Now this isn't dissimilar to what we find even at Teotihuacan. We find some elements of this with the, like the pyramid of Quetzalcoatl with the plume serpent heads and the Tlaloc heads and so forth. I'd really do wonder if this has got some connection with Tlaloc because there is a there is a legend here relating to like a thunder god connected with this particular site and I wonder if it's anything to do with an early incarnation of Tlaloc. This is one of the western stairways. There's two, there's one just further up. And you can see just to the left there, we see some more examples of these megalithic blocks. Now, most of them from this side have clearly been taken and used by the local town for their own construction projects. There's not much in the way of carvings here. There's not much in the way of kind of stucco reliefs. There is one that was recorded um, and we'll show you an image of that. And that was actually around this side of the pyramid, I think. Um, and look, we've got these things here, which are interesting. These are like, we find these around different sides of the pyramid where they've kind of got an alcove 
and a small stairway leading up to it. And then the, the other main stairway is just over there. So we've kind of driven around most of the pyramid now. So we're giving you like a nice steady shot as well, which is nice. And yeah, we're just driving past the other stairway. So we're just coming around the southwestern side of the pyramid now. This is where we're actually going to stop and have a quick look because there's some gigantic stones we want to get on camera for you. This is the southwestern edge of the pyramid. It's nicely curved. And just up there, which I'm going to go and look at more closely, are some absolutely gigantic blocks. So hopefully we can get up there safely. Yeah, I think we can. But just show you, yeah, so these are just some good examples. That's the main way in on the south side. But these here, these are kind of, there's only a few of these kind of mega kind of slabs left. But look at the size of that, it's at least 10 feet long, maybe a foot or two thick. And clearly megalithic in its construction. Look at that. And then we have some more here, just protruding out. And here as well. Very, very interesting. So this is like part of the design spec of the builders of this particular site. So we just climbed up a level, We're actually like on the same level as these are. This is huge. Look at this. This is like a megalith from Avebury or something. Strange. It's got like a V kind of carved in it as well, which is unusual. So it's almost like, you know, is this one block or two blocks? It looks like one block and it's been split. And it's got like this strange, maybe that was to direct water or something. There's the main part of it there. Just to give you a sense of scale, there's my hand. So you can see these are multi-ton blocks here on the southwestern corner of the pyramid. And then we have these ones here as well. So we're just walking around to the western side here and you can just see more of these blocks just show you these and then we're gonna finish up we're gonna come back here and have a look at the other sites in town as well because there's a whole complex here so we just have a few more here and just a little tree growing out of this one which is nice so this is around the western side of the main site so we're just leaving the site, the pyramid here at Izamal, gigantic pyramid. The sun's just come out during sunset. Uh, well worth checking out. Uh, we've shown you as much of it as we can um, around the sides and part of the town as well. And do check out our other videos here from um, Mexico because there's more sites than we realize that have megalithic aspects and being a megalithomaniac that's what we're really looking for and do check out um, our channel subscribe click the like button um, you know become a patron if you can and uh, really appreciate your support megalithomaniacs and we'll see you next time